denizens of the night. Welcome to another episode of the macabre, the terrifying. Broadcasting live from a Cryptid Hunters Anonymous meeting in the basement of a YMCA, I will be your guide through the witching hours. Tonight, let's meet a new friend. Isn't that exciting? Now, let me see. It says here, our new friend is nocturnal, okay? That it lurks in the tops of trees, and it has freakishly long limbs to climb around and grab its prey. Okay, who set me up with a cryptid again? Oh boy. The last time I got tangled up with something like this, Men in Black showed up, and suddenly I was missing an entire week of time. Well, our new friend has a name. The Bighorn Grove Pine Crawler. Hmm, count me intrigued. This story is called in the 1970s, the mayor of my town invented a bizarre cryptid to attract tourists. I'm starting to think it wasn't made up and was written by Skinny Tinkles. You've probably heard of Bigfoot, Mothman, and the like. Those are the ones who attract all of the cryptid chasers. What you haven't heard of, I bet, is the Bighorn Grove Pine Crawler. Most people haven't heard of Bighorn Grove at all, so that'll tell you how successful it was at reeling people in. I mean, Mothman is a neat idea. Big red eyes, huge wings, all that cool stuff. And Bigfoot is a big ol' ape. Now that's a lot of fun. The Pine Crawler... He ain't that. The sightings describe him as having shaggy fur covering its head and torso, like one of them bearded collie dogs, but his limbs are hairless, scrawny and twice the average dude's height, with claws big enough to wrap around trees, and a membrane between the limbs, like the one that those flying squirrels have. You see them blurry pictures of Bigfoot walking by a tree or Moss man flying through the air? You wouldn't get that with the pine crawler. According to the stories, he used his freakishly long limbs to climb around the treetops and grab at its prey. But, since our boy is nocturnal and he lurks at the top of the trees, nobody got any pictures of him. Imagine that. A cryptid without even a blurry image. Now that's just poor. The only real images were some sketches made from witnesses' descriptions and a picture of the night sky and the treetops taken by a witness right before it moved away from the camera. Let's talk about the witnesses in question, by the way. The mayor, Oliver Miller, had always been talking about how we needed more tourism in Bighorn Grove. The population of the town was around 2,000 in the 70s, and visitors weren't common. Mayor Miller thought that a lot of profit could be made from tourists, but we liked our town the way it was. Small, quiet. His attempts to attract tourists were known to us, however. So when his son Michael, as well as his college-aged friends, witnessed the pine crawler for the first time in 71, Everyone chalked it up to good old Miller seeking visitors. Sightings of the creature from elderly folk, teenagers, and drunks piled up over the next decade, none of which were taken seriously, of course. In 79, Miller unveiled a statue of the pine crawler, which was ridiculous considering that nobody outside of the town had ever heard of the thing. People passing by the statue took to calling it Ollie, after our dear old mayor. Around the start of the 80s, though, the killings started. A kid staying in his grandparents' cabin for the weekend 
claimed that his grandpa was carried into the forest while teaching him how to hunt. Two days later, they found the body. His legs were broken, and it appeared that his heart had given out not long after the injury. The mayor tried to insinuate that the pine crawler was responsible, to which he received no small amount of backlash. The townsfolk considered themselves a rational lot. They figured that some kind of murderer was roaming the woods. A month later, a car was seen crashed into a tree on the roadside. The cops found the owner, a young woman, much further into the forest, also with her legs broken. The cops were slower to find her than a passing black bear, however. When a man went missing whilst on a camping trip three weeks after that, a huge search party went out into the forest that night. He was found with his legs broken and his head caved in on a rock. He, however, was found outside a cabin belonging to one George Anderson. George was a Vietnam veteran, and he'd always been a bit colder after coming home. But the few that were close to him would have never suspected him of doing something like this. But the chief of police was the nephew of the old man that had been killed. The mayor probably saw catching a killer as a way to get back in the people's good graces, and George had, at most, four friends, so they pinned the deaths on him and he went to jail for the rest of his days. There weren't many sightings of the pine crawler after that. It was only passed around through story. I remember some guys I knew tried to make a short film about it when they were in college, but it got about 50 views on YouTube, and they took it down. I returned to Bighorn Grove recently because my dad passed away last week got mauled by a bear whilst on a hunting trip. No real way to sugarcoat it. I take some small comfort in the fact that he always joked that it's how we'd want to go out. Still, it's a bad way to go. I've seen The Revenant and Backcountry. After the funeral today, Jack invited me to come drink with him. Jack went through Vietnam with my dad, and he's always been like an uncle to me. We shared stories about him and laughed, while his granddaughter, Sarah, rolled her eyes at us. A bear of all things, I sighed. Listen, kid, Jack said slowly. Kid, I'm 36, I laughed. No, really, kid, you gotta listen to this. I don't think a bear killed your pops. What do you mean, Jack? Oh, he's going to show you his conspiracy theories, Sarah teased. Shush now, this is serious, he snapped. He began to lead me downstairs to his basement. When the light flicked on, I was met with a wall with dozens of pictures pinned to it. Looking at them, I realized that they were pictures of a creature in the trees that fitted the description of the pine crawler. These weren't blurry either. They looked to be taken with a real high-quality camera. It's real, kid. Uh, how long have you been collecting these, Jack? I asked him. Your father and I started gathering proof since George got locked up. We wanted to prove that the pine crawler did this, not him. You're saying that it killed all those people in the 80s? Why'd it stop? The old man thought that instead of driving to town for some food, he'd teach his grandson to hunt. Pine Crawler didn't like its prey being taken, decided it'd teach him a lesson. The girl in the car didn't like the noise. Most people know not to drive through the forest at night anyways. The camper, well... The pine crawler's smarter than your average bear. It saw that search parties were encroaching on its territory after the previous kills, so it snatched the camper and left him outside poor George's house to frame him. Then it stopped, because people don't go near the forest at night now, and it can eat all the animals at once. You've really thought about this, haven't you? 
And you think it killed my dad? Kid, in the last couple months, we noticed that it started killing predators recently. Wolves, mountain lions, bears. It's practically clear in the forest of them. I think that's why it killed your father while he was hunting. Yeah, but why, Jack? Well, kid, I think it wants to make the area safe for its little one. Huh? He opened a box to reveal a large, reddish-brown egg. Jack, how'd you get this? I saw it in a tree this morning. I took a shot at the branch and it fell down. The thing barely got scratched, so I brought it back. As if to demonstrate its durability, he slammed down on it hard with his fist to no effect. I'm going to figure out a way to destroy this egg so we won't have to be dealing with a pine crawler junior, stated Jack. Now I'm going to go to bed. It's getting dark out. You can use the spare room. Rest sounds good. Neither of us were exactly sober, and he had just shown me some pretty strong proof of a monster existing. Despite my tiredness, I figured I'd write this down before I fall asleep. That was the plan, anyway. But Sarah just told me she saw some big animal outside. It could just be a bear or something, but I'm worried. I think that the Bighorn Grove Pine Crawler is real, and it wants its egg back. Uh-oh. It sounds like you've committed one of the cardinal sins of surviving a monster attack. Don't stand between a monster and its young. Also, you better hope that thing doesn't hatch. You might have an alien situation on your hand, with a little thing running around trying to spear you. Nothing is freakier than a monster's egg. Especially when it's all hard or something. Makes you wonder, what sort of creature is capable of emerging out of that thing? If you enjoyed this story, please check out the author in the link below. Please also leave a like on this video. And if you're feeling saucy, Leave us a comment, letting us know what you do with a monster egg like this one. And if you'd like to hear more stories like this, hit the subscribe button and come back again soon. Whatever you do, don't take the monster egg out of the woods and don't fall asleep.